ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Arlo McKinley. Arlo, how's it going today, dude? It's going good, man. How are things with you? It's going good, man. A little bit cold down here in Kentucky. I can't imagine what the weather's like up there in Cincinnati. Hey, it's been it's been cold, but today we actually got a we got a pretty good one today. So uh, can't complain. Actually, been running around and enjoying it a little bit. But yeah, the cold's coming on quick. Yeah, man, it went from summer to winter like in no time whatsoever. I think we had like one or two days of fall, it seems like. Yeah, it seems like it's been like that for like the past couple of years. It seems like there's no like fall and barely even springs anymore. We just go from like back and forth to like winter and summer. <laughs> and, but yeah, it's, uh, yeah, the falls don't really uh, happen too much, at least in this area. It, yeah, it wasn't like super cold. And but yeah, today we got a good one, a little bit of, a little kind of a fall day up here, but yeah, just yeah. Uh, enjoying it. So nice, man. Good to hear. Yeah, I'm a little bit jealous of you being up there in Cincinnati right now. Cincinnati is home of two of my favorite places on planet Earth. One being yeah. Skyline Chili, and number two being Kings Island. I'm a big amusement park guy, so I love Kings Island. Yeah, those are well. First off, Skyline Chili is is amazing i don't care what uh some people like to hate on it but i've, I've always loved it and being from here it's just one of those one of those things either love it or hate it there's no middle ground in between but uh, and yeah king's island's another thing that i don't realize i don't know if people like realize that that's that it's here i don't know it's one of those things because it is a it's even a place that i'll forget about like sometimes and not really get up there as much as i should or like yeah. it is a good time especially this time of year they do the whole Halloween stuff, and then keep the rides open. You don't have to wait in lines and all that good stuff. But I haven't, I haven't been out there in ages. But both very good spots. Very good. Oh, yeah, man. I wish they yeah. had skylines all over the place, man. Them Coney dogs, there's just something about them. They can touch your soul. Yeah, I mean, they're, uh, they're good. My, my, my girlfriend is actually from, uh, from Florida and New York and stuff, and she'd never had it and heard nothing. So I'm, I'm weak because most people are just like weirded out by them for some reason. I don't know. People just don't want to try them. But um, well, well, gotta, well, it might be uh, the cheese, man. They they basically baptize those things in cheese. You have to dig through a pile of cheese to see if there's even a hot dog underneath it. Right. Yeah. Or like chili. Yeah. No, it, that that's the only uh, that's the only thing that can sometimes be out of hand. But yeah, I don't know. I've a uh, everyone I show it to it ends up usually being a pretty good experience. But there are some people who just absolutely hate it, <laughs> and it just always, I always kind of get a kick out of it. But yeah, it, also, everybody has what floats their boat. Yeah, right, exactly. And it's also just crazy to me how many people actually know about it outside of here, like as well. Like it's a, it's a thing. Like anytime someone comes in from out of town, it's always we gotta try Cincinnati chili or whatever. But yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a fan of it. And then we've got all like the little small places around too that I like. But I think Skyline kind of kind of runs the show around here yeah I, I just love the whole atmosphere of cincinnati it's such yeah. a unique city man because uh you, you've got a great scene in every type of entertainment possible whether it's you know country music rock music hip-hop and even comedy you know you kind of got like a, it's a little bit of a melting pot whenever it comes to entertainment yeah i, I agree that's a it's another thing like i don't know how i say that i have a little love hate relationship with it i love it because of all that stuff for sure and then my reasons for not liking it i don't know everyone seems to want to get out of where they grew up or whatever but as it's just as a city as a whole it's kind of like a hidden hidden gem people are always like surprised when they come here and i don't know see kind of that stuff it's, yeah. especially over the last 10 15 years or so they really, really even tried to bring more to it like two new big venues for like concerts just came in and then like theaters and like even comedy stuff like you said there's comedy clubs i mean for like the arts in every kind of form it's it's definitely a, a place that there's a lot to uh kind of experience 
and the and yeah, and music was. You, well, yeah, man, you uh, you learned me something because whenever I first heard about you, it, it was last year. Whenever you released the album "Die Midwestern," and it's, it seems yep. like I'm I'm naive, man. I didn't do no good in geography class or anything like that. Whenever I think of Midwestern, I'm like, that's Nebraska, you know, or Montana, someplace like that. I didn't know Ohio yeah. was Midwestern, but I googled it today, and yeah, it's Midwestern. Yeah. I, I never, I've never understood it to be honest. Like I kind of, I don't know. I've, all, I, would, I would think the same as you. I don't know why that part's not considered the Midwest. I don't know. I, I always thought it was strange because we're definitely more in the East. But yeah, it's um, it's one of those. Yeah, just this whole area. Like even like Kentucky, still kind of Midwest. You go any further than that, you're kind of hitting the South. Well top half of Kentucky, I guess, but yeah, this whole area, and I don't know, it's just a thing, it's a, a Midwest to it, it's just a whole whole little feel to its own, <laughs> of, of its own, I think, but yeah, it's kind of, it's kind of strange, I've always thought that, that was kind of strange that Ohio is considered the Midwest. <laughs> But yeah, man, I've been listening to your uh, debut album ever since it came out, and I dug into your uh, other discography too, but man, this debut album is absolutely amazing. To me, you are one of the best songwriters in the last few years, man. There's not many artists that, whenever you're listening to a record, you just have to sit there and listen, and that's what you do with me, man. But whenever I was getting ready for this interview, though, I found out that you're also a hell of a cover artist, too. I, I was going through your YouTube channel, and I was not expecting to hear you cover people like Post Malone and The Misfits and Rihanna, but, dude, you you, you done a hell of a job. But what made you go that route and, and cover artists that aren't typically in your genre? Um, That's like, well, like when it comes to, like, misfit stuff like i grew up like kind of on the punk shows and stuff i had two older brothers so they were into all that stuff and then i don't know by the by the time my parents you know by the time they had gotten older my parents kind of just knew that i was going to follow in their footsteps anyway so they were you know my parents let those let my two brothers like take me to shows and stuff so i'd always been into that kind of stuff and i've always been into like all types of music Mm -hmm. and i really don't listen to like a whole lot of stuff that is in like same genre that I that I'm like a part of it, that just happens to be the like the way that I'm able to kind of, kind of like that's the best music that fits what I'm wanting to do I don't know if it's just picking up a guitar and singing but like cover wise I just I don't know I think it would be like we'll throw country songs in or like I'll you know I'll pick a country song here and there to throw out but I just like to always, because those are they're good songs, and I kind of just try to like sort of break, like not not do anything new or anything different, but just genre. The stuff has never like been really important to me. I'm just a fan of music, mm-hmm. and if there's something like a song that I like or a song I think's catchy that I want to do, then um, I would rather you know just try to tackle that, like a Post Malone song or a Rihanna song, and then I'm used to cover Molly Crew, Home Sweet Home often and just like just what it's like any kind of just any kind of song that that I like or grew up on and because I think people would just expect me to maybe go out and do a I don't know maybe a country song or like a Merle Haggard song which I have and stuff like that but I just prefer to kind of put my take on like some of these like pop songs that I just think are super catchy already and they're songs that I like and I don't know. I just like to, um, I don't know. It's always just funny and nice to yeah. see the responses to people. It's like when they hear those covers and stuff like that. So yeah, it's uh, Yeah. I just like to kind of switch things up and do things that aren't really, I think expected of me. Yeah. Yeah. It throws and, um, people off, man. It gives them that surprise factor. And also like you may turn on people to other styles of music. Uh, speaking about covers, yeah. Post Malone, man, like that dude, has some great covers as well. Like my wife, she's a big fan of his regular music. I, I like yeah. most of it, you know, but I, I'm I'm into a lot more different music than she is. Whenever she shows me something like him covering Sturgill's "You Can Have the Crown," I'm like, "What? That's the same dude? That's pretty cool." Yeah, yeah, that that guy, man. I, I'm I'm kind of 
like yeah, can't say I'm a super fan. I like his first record. I'm a pretty big fan of his second one, but but as like an artist, I'm. I respect that guy a lot because I, he's doing the same thing just in an opposite way, doing covers that people wouldn't expect him to do. But, you know, he's a Texas kid and, you know, Texas guy. And, um, yeah, he did, I saw that he did a good cover, like a Brad Paisley song that I'm going to miss her. Song. Yeah. And yeah. it was, it was, and I think it's the same, it's just the same thing. Like people that probably listened to him weren't expecting those. When I heard him do that Sturgill cover, I was pretty blown away by that. And um, I heard he's doing an album with Dwight Yoakam's band. I don't know if that's true or not. Oh man, that would be killer right there. Because I, I was uh, I done some research into him a little bit, and yeah, he was in like country bands before he became like this big yeah. rap star that he was. Uh, for the people out there listening, yeah. you can actually find a really old cover of him doing Bob Dylan's "Don't Think Twice, It's All Right," oh. and he kills it, man. Like he does yeah. a great job on it. That was, I think that's probably the video that I saw that like really made me like think that or realize that I really like this guy. I was like, man, all right. Cause I was kind of whatever, everyone's kind of hyped on him and people were liking his stuff. And I saw him do that and I was like, all right, there's something more to him. And then I looked into him kind of like as well, like you were saying. And yeah, just found out, you know, he's a country guy that grew up on that stuff as well. But that cover, I think I've heard a lot of people cover that song and he's, he, he does that song well. He's a great singer. And, uh, yeah, doing his song is, uh, it, it's fun. But, and I, I, it's crazy too though, that people want to hear these songs. Like, I'll hear, most of my shows, you'll hear Go Flex yelled out, like, <laughs> throughout the entire show. And, in which I can't really pull it off because that my piano player doesn't really go out with me too much anymore. And I don't know how to play it, but it's, yeah, I, it's fun stuff. But yeah, and I don't know, that stuff just, I don't know, I've always just looked at music as a whole and not really tried to be like, I'm this kind of music fan or yeah. this kind of music fan or anything like that. Yeah, yeah it's cool whenever you, uh, the, one of the artists that you're into, you find out that like they actually are in it for the love of the music. You can kind of tell when somebody's in this type of pr profession for either the money or the fame or whatever it is with somebody yeah. like you and Post Malone and people like that you can just tell that like you actually enjoy what it is that you're doing and that's why you can come off the wall with these crazy covers and surprise people because like it, it's I think it's good to have a wide musical taste for artists to have that because you, you never know what type of inspiration you can find in uncommon places yeah and that's that's how it is with me I was talking about my brothers like my dad was a huge or is uh, a huge like old like old bluegrass fan like old classic country stuff so i'd be going through his records when he's not home and then when he's home my brothers are gone i'm going through like their punk and metal records and hip-hop records so i was just like there was always some kind of music being played and uh -huh. I, I just grew up with so many different kinds of music around me and just i knew from a very early age it's what I wanted to do and then that kind of leads into it being fun like I, I've always said that I'll stop playing whenever it's not fun anymore I, I, I don't see any other reason to do it like I love doing it you know it's, mm -hmm. it's definitely got it's there's low points to it and but the high points and there's just not no better feeling than to me than playing or when you finish making a record or something just the feeling of it is mm -hmm. It's good, yeah, it's fun, and it's the only reason that I got into it, and I'm just glad that I still feel that way about it. Yeah, sp speaking about covers, man, I loved your cover of Blaze Foley's If I Could Only Fly. That That's an artist that not a lot of people know about, and I wish that they did. But what, what got you listening to Blaze Foley, man? Because like I said, not a lot of people know about that guy. I think it was, I think I got... Introduced to Bless Foley when uh, probably hearing, I think Merle and Willie do that song it was probably the first time I heard and that was they have an old version of it. And I know Merle had him put an album out in his later years, kind of, I think called If I Could Only Fly, and he did it again. And then that's around that time is when I really kind of got introduced to him. And I'm, I thought the same thing. I was like, why? 
why am I just now hearing about this guy? <laughs> like he's he's one of my favorite artists now of all time, and I just, it, it's it's still uh, kind of like amazes me that he's not more well known than yeah. like outside of I'm, a lot of like the songwriters and people that I know definitely know who he is, but just on a I mean he has so many good songs and but yeah, getting into him, I, he's one of those guys that. There was a Blaze Foley era where if I was, if you were hanging out with me or something, you were definitely hearing Blaze Foley. Like that's all I listened to for a while. And um, yeah, it's a uh, yeah. And then I don't know. Then I read that book that was written by his, by his like wife or ex-wife or whatever. And then that even more he, to this day, he's one of my go-to guys to listen to. Just his songwriting in general, real similar to John Prine type stuff. Like I just like that kind of straightforward not taking your lyrics too seriously but saying what you want to say and just kind of taking a different approach to it yeah it's, yeah, it's crazy how he only recorded so little and yet he had yeah. such a big impact on the music industry and if what happened to him didn't happen i can just only imagine what the world would be like yeah like i, I often wonder how that would have worked out i just don't see it like yeah if that if his passing and his death and all that like how that worked out i just i don't know it's crazy to think about that kind of stuff because i just can't see how he wouldn't be like uh, have put out some good stuff and yeah it's it, it is crazy because yeah, a lot of his records have the same songs and stuff on them there's different versions and stuff like that but yeah it's uh yeah, he's a, he was amazing. Did, uh, have you ever checked out that uh, thing that Mike Judge did? It's called Tales from the Tour Bus. I think it was on HBO yeah. or something like that. Yeah, it was on Cinemax. Yeah, yeah, I, uh, yeah, I did. I actually was just turned my uh, my dad onto that not too long ago. He's in the all that stuff, and that's the episode I think we watched. Uh, it's so that. well done. Yeah, that's that uh, that show, especially that season, the country season. I. I I thought that was a genius idea, and it's so, it's so good. Yeah, I love that stuff. But his, um, I thought it was cool that he did one too on Blaze, just to, because I know that probably opened some, got some more people into him that probably wouldn't have heard him otherwise. Yeah, I, I mean, really, such a uh, great songwriter to do as little as he did. I mean, he, he can make a fun song like Big Cheeseburgers and Good French Fries yeah. and then do If I Could Only Fly and just rip your heart out. Yeah, yeah, he had the, it's the, he had the uh, ability definitely to, he had to do the rip your heart out thing. And that's the, yeah, it was, it was into his records, just, it's kind of an experience because just like you said, you'll hear a song where, like uh, Moonlight Song or uh, If I Could Only Fly and then something about uh, the, you know then then the big or then the cheeseburger big friend whatever that that one and I don't know you're on like a big low from hearing like the sad song and then you're like wait now what am I hearing and he's talking about <laughs> God's Cadillac and this and stuff like that I don't know it's such an interesting character and that whole little Texas scene at that time I think is a is a pretty important time to music in general like with guy clark and and uh towns and all mm. those guys so yeah i also yeah. loved uh john prine's cover of clay pigeons uh, the reason that i love his cover and your cover so much of the blaze foley songs are that y you both kept it so original so much like blaze i love merle's version if i could only fly but, you know, he, he, he kind of made that song his own. Whenever I'm listening yeah. to you and John do your covers, I mean, it's just like Blaze. And I just, I appreciated that, man. Yeah, I mean, there's some some covers that I'll, that I'll do that I kind of will try to do my own little thing on. But there's some songs that if, some songs I just don't think you should even cover and play out too much just because they're perfect how they are. And yeah. I kind of felt that way with, if I could only fly, but it just had its own meaning to me, and and it means a lot. It's a song that means a lot to me, and um, it, and it was just I just wanted to do it how it was, and it's I don't know if some it's not broke, you know, no need to try and fix it. <laughs> is, you know what they say, but yeah, John did the same with Clay Pigeons that that version, 
is is amazing, but it's just like the Blazon. But it's a uh, yeah. Some things you just kind of want to. There's no need to change it up. They're pretty perfect how they how they are. Yeah, man. And, and I also was uh, reading a little bit about you today, and I, and I didn't know this until today, but how you were the last artist that John signed to uh, Oh Boy Records. Man, that that must have been a. Uh, it's I understand this is a bittersweet experience but what was that like and, and how did the record deal with oh boy records come about um yeah the uh it's it's um yeah it's a bittersweet thing being the last guy you know or being the last person signed to old boy and it's that'll always be just being on old boy alone and john noticing and listening to my stuff that'll always I always say that that's sort of my success point. <laughs> now, anything else that comes along with it is just a little bit extra. That, in, in like, for him to take time to come out to a show and check me out uh, one night in Nashville on a Thursday night, and it just, I don't know, knowing that people are going to want to take pictures and this and that, that, that just meant the world to me when he did that. But, um, I've been um, Jody, his um, it's uh, Fiona, his son, then uh, Fiona and Fiona's. They, uh, I've been in contact with him for a while. Jody, he invited me to come down uh, a year, or so maybe it was 2018 or s- somewhere around there. Maybe I really can't remember, but uh, had me come down and played Americana Fest at a little thing that uh, Old Boy was throwing on, a little pop-up bar called The Tree of Forgiveness. And um, that's where I met Jody for the first time, and we talked that night. And But I, I had no idea leaving that night that it was going to turn into what it was. And we, you know, just, it's not like we stayed in touch a lot, but anytime I would be in Nashville or playing a show, I'd end up running into him. And then... Uh, slowly, um, just over time, was starting to show interest because I had a record that I'd recorded here that never came out that was going to be Diamond Western and that I was just going to put out by myself. And then when I found out Old Boy was, you know, had an interest, I just kind of held on to it. And that was really the only label that I would have probably, probably done that for. It was just such a, I don't know. And then after. Jody and them being uh, interested and Jody had seen me a few times and he brings John and Fiona out to one of the shows and that's when I actually got to meet John and it's actually the only time I met him. I had played with him prior but didn't get to meet him and um, but yeah it was just one of those things where you where you're standing in front of I don't, I don't know it's it's just almost a surreal moment when yeah. you're standing in front of one of the people that are pretty responsible, that are better responsible for, you know, what you're <laughs> doing, not responsible, but still an influence. And I don't know, it just, it means the, it means the world to me. Everyone at that label is wonderful. They do, they go above and beyond, uh, just let me be the artist that I am and, and they support me. But yeah, then I got, ended up, I believe it was, I definitely got signed on my birthday. It was October 23rd, I think maybe 2019. And then I think some, I'm bad with years, but it, it just the way that it all happened, it was nothing rushed. We all just got to know each other. And I think figured that a working relationship could uh, work out. And it's been, it's been good ever since. So that's yeah, cool, super, super thankful for everyone over there. Yeah. Did uh, John get to hear a lot of the record before he passed? I actually had thought that I just, I mean, I found out, I think, just maybe within the last six to eight months that he did. I thought for a while, because my my mother had passed away short, like in March, right before like COVID happened, and then John yeah. a little after, and I was always kind of, always kind of bummed that neither one got to hear the album. I am talking to Jody about it. He let me know that John got to hear it. And then, um, 
and that he was excited about it. So yeah, he did get to uh, hear it, and that made me, you know, that, that definitely made me feel pretty good about it because those are two people that I really would have wanted to hear the album and yeah. to know that John got to uh, it. Yeah, it means a lot to know, and it, it was great. I mean, he even though I only had the one uh, experience with him, really, like after recording wrapped up in Memphis, there was you know, a gift waiting for me at the studio that had been there and we had a, uh, he gave me a couple of bottles of some good bourbon to celebrate. <laughs> uh, the, uh, uh, waiting for me after we wrapped it up and that were there the whole time, didn't know. But yeah, he got to hear it and was into it. And I think Bag of Pills is uh, the song that I think caught his attention, though I believe, if, if I recall correctly. And then, yeah, so I guess he's pretty excited about seeing what happened. So, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm glad he got to hear it. Yeah, man, it, it really is an amazing record. To, to me, that's one of my favorite records of at least the last five years. Because like I was uh, saying at the beginning of this, it's one of those records you really just have to sit down and listen to. Man, I, I've tapped my foot to songs like the title track, Die Midwestern, and then I listen to a song like Bag of Pills, and it just rips my heart out because you know it's it's very relatable to people that have went through dark periods in their lives yeah were, were you ever like kind of hesitant about being so open with your music I'm, no that's just the way that i've i mean that's I, I didn't really start writing songs till a little later in my life i was always a singer and i would sing but when i started writing i played with uh i played with a guy jeremy pinnell who's doing some pretty cool things right now for for years and years and um and he kind of wrote songs in a similar way and and i just kind of i always admired what he did with that just being open about it i don't know that's just it's really the only way i know how to do it i never try to get too intricate with lyrics or you know throw out like cream metaphors and this and that. It's, I, I don't know I'm just I think it's also in a way that I can just communicate a little better with everyone I don't know every mm -hmm. every song that I have I think I could tell you what at least I was going through at the moment that made me write it but they kind of tell the listener themselves but I don't know I, that's I'm and it's just weird to get the feedback of people really enjoying these songs because I always looked at that as my writing is sort of just simple and not really, I was never that confident in it. And I'm still, I'm still dealing with that a little, but I've gotten over it and not cared too much. But it just, like you said, I think just people can relate to it. And um, that's just what kind of, keeps me writing that way i don't know it's uh, yeah it's just the only way i really know how to write a song yeah you see you see a lot of what you sing about being glorified in other types of music and other forms of entertainment and it, it's it's great whenever somebody can come around and it, it's it's just nice to have an artist like you and also you know uh, different people in your genre like you're uh, talking about earlier the kind of the old style of Texas with Waylon and Willie and Chris and all those guys. It's almost the same thing going on nowadays with people like yeah. you and Tyler and Sturgill. You're, you're kind of getting that same vibe. And the reason that I love the outlaw country style so much is that it is real. It is genuine. It's relatable. And, and you know, people in our area, it's so great to hear somebody singing and you can listen to what they're saying and you're like dang i've been through something like that it's you're almost like a hero yeah. to folks that comes up often as well I, I couldn't tell you how many times people have written to me or reached out and have said like similar things like that about uh just just almost almost just giving me a thank you for you know, it's a certain song because they can relate and they went through it and it made them feel that they weren't, you know, alone and 
certain situations and it's just I don't know that's that's the kind of stuff that I've always liked is just honesty in music and it's um uh, yeah it's it's just strange I'm not just one that can sit down and say I'm gonna write a think of a story in my head and write about it and mm. not taking away anything from people that do that and that works out fine but that's just for me I have to just write and sing about experiences that I've gone through where it doesn't really it just doesn't really work for me yeah. and um, yeah it's good to see that it's good that there's artists like that doing that a lot now like all the people you said and Benjamin Todd's another one that does stuff like that with Lost on the Street Band and there's just a lot of I don't know I just kind of feel like honesty is kind of coming back in the in the music a little bit more these days and but yeah the um, I don't know I'm glad that people can relate to the stuff that I write I don't really go out of my way to do it but I just tell my story that I've lived over the past almost 42 years so I'm glad that it's working and that people get something out of it yeah I was reading uh, today and I, and I seen where you were you know in your early 40s getting your big break finally and I, I had a thought if it wasn't for all of these things that you've been through I just don't know if your music today would be what it is you almost needed to wait this long to really uh, get this message out if, if that yeah. makes sense it, it 100% makes sense um, yeah, that's I've been asked similar things like before or like, when the record first came out yeah that was a big thing like uh, break it 40 years old and this and that and then um, like I've been doing music in somewhere near almost my entire life but as a songwriter there's I wouldn't have I, I, I just I hadn't lived enough I had to go through all the things that I've gone through to be able to write these songs and it's that's why it, that's why it works I wouldn't have been able to do this at 20 or even 30 probably I just it's really just me reflecting back on things now and just looking at situations I've gone through and that you know every, we all think we know everything at between 20 and 30 and all that but the older I you know the older I get I just kind of see a little clear about what I've been through what I've done, the good, the bad, and the ugly, and all that, and now just write about it. And I, I wouldn't have, there's, I definitely wouldn't have been able to do what I'm doing now if, if I was younger. And I wouldn't, I probably also wouldn't have been smart enough to, to really go out and be successful at it either. I would have probably found a way to mess it all up somehow. So being a little older, wiser, I think works for me and yeah I just had to go through it so and uh it worked out but yeah yeah you're you're definitely right about that it wouldn't have it wouldn't have happened I wouldn't have been able to make time at Western if at any other time I think the timing of it just was everything kind of worked out perfectly yeah man and, and this really is a perfect record from front to back it's it's almost like a story and walk in shoes how it ends it's it's almost like you're listening to a movie what's next in your career do you have anything planned i mean where do you go from here uh i got a new record finished uh went back to sam phillips again and worked with the same people and uh have a new record finished and that will come out sometime uh, hopefully early next year we're kind of wrapping everything up on that and then about the maybe just touring kind of making up for lost shows during the you know the COVID shutdown I know we're still dealing with it but the the major shutdown that happened at first kind of happened we were supposed to leave for uh, I think I had a tour lined up and I, once everything started shutting down, that whole tour got canceled. So 
we just have a lot of there's going to be a lot of road time and then the new record will come out because I haven't even really gone out and really toured for Diamond Western and done it I've, I've, I was lucky enough to stay busy but the uh, yeah, the future now is just to go out and play that record and then uh, yeah just travel put out this new one that I'm super excited about and uh, yeah to see where it goes and just keep on keep on doing it that's the only thing I really know how to do <laughs> so it's not and so yeah excited about the new record and then yeah the tour is coming up so got a lot of stuff coming up nice man well Arlo I know that you're a busy guy thank you so much for taking the time to talk with me today man I absolutely love what you're doing man and uh, speaking about tour I'm going to try to catch the uh, Louisville show with Sonora May I- I'm really man. really really looking forward to that man but just thank you for uh, keeping it real here in the music business um, man thank you for having me I, I appreciate it and uh, it really it means the world anytime someone has an interest to even talk to me because this whole this whole thing to me is still crazy <laughs> so I, it really does it means just as much to me as uh, it does to you so i appreciate it more than you know so yeah if you're uh, at the little show make sure you say hey and uh we'll uh, we'll have a talk we'll do some hangs so hey sounds good man and arlo thanks again brother yeah thank you man you have a good one